Hey guys, what's going on? So today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a Minecraft Pocket Edition server on your PC. So this works with 0.8.1 right now, and it's going to be updating later, to, of course, to get 0.9.0 on future versions of Pocket Edition. So right now it does work with 0.8.1. The only thing it doesn't really work with is Rails, unfortunately. So Right now I'm actually using my server computer, my secondary computer to record this and this is the serv this, this is the computer I have set up for servers like Pocket Edition server and whatnot. So the performance on it isn't going to be as good and the video isn't going to be as smooth or look as great as it would on my main gaming computer and here it's already popping up. Uh, yeah, recording on it kind of bogs it down, built-in graphics and whatever. So anyways, Go to the link that you'll see in the in the description that'll take you to pocketmine.net. So all you gotta do here, well there's two things you can do. You can get plugins or you can get the server itself. I'm gonna be showing plugins later on in the video. So get go to get pocketmine MP and you get all the versions up here. You get Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. Mac OS and iOS, nobody ever clicks those because nobody uses that crap. I'm going to be showing you how to do Windows, and in a later video, who knows when, it's going to, I'm, or I'm going to, this freaking thing, I was looking at that, I'm going to be showing an Android tutorial as well, so stay tuned for that if you want to host it on your phone or tablet, which I don't re recommend it doing, I tried it and it just, the, it just kind of lagged out a lot, and it was kind of a mess, so here you're going to have to either pick a 64-bit installer or a 32-bit installer, so some people don't know what they have a 64 bit and 32 which is normal a lot of people don't know so I'm going to take, say it this way and I'm going to show you how you can check on that so 64 bit would be about 4 gigs of RAM and up 32 bit would be about 4 gigs of RAM and below some people say 2 gigabytes but honestly 4 gigabytes is what it really is so how are you going to check on that go to your start menu down here go to computer right click Go to properties, and you'll see this here. So you're gonna look at that. And you're gonna say 64-bit operating system, and look how much RAM you have. So I got eight gigs of RAM because that is gonna be coming in handy later on in the video. Let's close out of that. I'm gonna go with 64-bit installer because I have a 64-bit operating system. You can use 32-bit uh, installer on a 64-bit, but it just isn't gonna run nearly as good. I don't know why I needed to say that, but whatever. So you'll see the icon for it right here. Open that up. Hit next. I agree. I already have the Pocket Mine folder on this uh, on this computer on the desktop, so I'm just gonna call it Pocket Mine Video. But you don't need to rename, rename anything. Just hit install and let it go through its thing. That'll pop up with the Microsoft Visual C++ installer or whatever. The only reason it needs to do that every single time because it should it shouldn't have to do that every time, but it just you know it's got a double check so I already had that installed but now it is finished installing so I'm gonna hit next and you can either choose to run pocket mine right now or you can ugh, excuse me uh, or you can hold off I'm gonna hold off and delete the installer and open up the folder so you can, you can see right now there's nothing really in the folder so just hit start and I'm gonna I'm going to shrink the wind, window down so type in the language that you use. I use Chinese. Um, I'm just shitting you. Um, I use English. There you go. As you can tell, I use English. Well, hopefully you can tell. Unless you, unless you are Chinese and you have no, you have no freaking clue. Anyway, um, do you want to skip the setup wizard? Wizard. What the hell? Wizard. <laughs> if you'd like to skip it or whatever, you can... What you would do then is you would go manually through the server properties file, which is what I would usually do, but the setup wizard is going to be easier for you guys to use, so I am going to go through the setup wizard. Actually, yeah, I'll do it. Do you accept the license? Yes. Give a name to your server. Damn. Server port 19132, just hit enter. That's, that's a default. Unless you're ho if you're hosting multiple servers, then... You can put you can change the port, but then by then you'd know what you're doing. So 
Anyway, server RAM in megabytes. So this is where the RAM part, how much RAM you have in your computer is going to be important. So I have 8 gigs of RAM in my computer. So what would be logical for me to do is about 512 megabytes. That would, I mean, it's never going to really use over 100 megabytes, honestly, but it's good to have, you know, that space, that space there space there. Considering this is only my server computer, I only have two servers on it, I just give it four gigs of RAM, never have to worry about a thing. But if you have like four gigs of RAM in your computer, go 256. And if you have two gigabytes, go 128. And if you have under four gigabytes, get a new computer. So I'm gonna go again with four gigs of RAM or four thousand ninety six megabytes and enter your game mode. Creative or survival, I'm going to put mine in survival, so put zero. Online players, I'm going to put 20. Depending on your internet speed, you know, if you're seeing that if you have a bunch of people on your server and it goes slow, put it at 10 or something like that, I'm going to go with 20. Spawn protection, no. OP, any OP you want on your server, you'd probably just put your own username on there, so there's me. Do you want to enable a whitelist? I would usually put yes. But I'm gonna hit no for that time or this time. You wanna disable Q uh, cord, whatever. Yes. You wanna enable Archon? No. You wanna disable anonymous usage? Yes. And now it's gonna just give it a second. It's gonna tell you your external and your internal IP address. So your your external IP address is the router. Yeah, the router's IP address, which will pe what people will be putting into their uh, devices so they can join. Your internal IP address is the IP address of your specific computer that your router gives out to your computer. So mine would be 192.168.1.1. And that's not the one you give out to people, like I say. If you want to give give it out to people, it'll look something slightly more like that that I just highlighted your external. So you're not done yet, unfortunately. Now you have to go in port forward. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm just going to close out of that. So, like I said, 192.168.1.1 or 1.2 was my IP address. And if you ever want to check on that again, because it will change, you'll have to report forward if you restart, restart your computer. So go to go down here, type CMD, and then what you'll do is you're going to type in IP config, and you can see right there. 192.168.1.2 right by the IPv4 address. So if you ever need to check up on that again, there you go. So now I'm going to show you how to port forward, and after that I'm going to show you how to get plugins, which is pretty simple. And I like getting plugins. So <laughs> plugins. <laughs> anyway, type in 192.168.1.1. That is your router's IP address that you can use to get into the different settings for it, whatever. So here. It has your login for your uh, router. So this is going to be your user, your usual username and password for you know, like your login if you want to use the Wi-Fi. This one's a little bit different. This is actually by default if you've never opened it before and changed it. By default, it's going to be on the back of your router. And most most passwords are 192.168. Or dang it, what am I doing? Okay, <laughs> your most. I'm thinking of the IP address. Um, your Usual username and password is admin, being the username, and your password being password. I just left my username at admin, and then the password is set, is set by me. I don't have the default one anymore. So this is where port forwarding gets confusing, and this is the part of the video I hate doing the most because I, I want to show you guys how to do it, but it's just different for everybody. Like rooting tutorials, the reason I won't do a rooting tutorial is because it's, diff it's different for everybody for the most part. So... What you're going to need to get is, if you don't know how to do it, is find your router um, username, or not username, find your router's model name and the brand. So you can see you have the Netgear WND R4500. So I'm just going to copy that because it's right here. Copy, cancel. Oop. Cancel again, okay. Hit paste and then to put in port. So you can see all these tutorials here, port forwarding, the Netgear, whatever router. So just put in your, you know, if you have, you know, a Belkin, whatever, or a Lynx is whatever. I have the Netgear, whatever. And just put that in. 
and go through the tutorial on that to port forward and when it comes to port forwarding use your external your internal IP address which is one for me 192.168.1.2 as a port forward and the port being 19132 so if you need to go if once it gets to the part part where you go and port forward if you need to go back to that just do that if you need that information it is a little tricky there and if you don't port forward only you can join from your Wi-Fi nobody else off of your Wi-Fi can join so make sure you port forward it's extremely important but now I'm going to show you how to get plugins so go back to the pocket mine page and hit plugins it'll take you to the pocket mine forums plugin page so I'm just gonna go look through here anything good no I'm gonna look at newest plugins I was gonna do that anyways um Nothing really sticking out is you know cool to me. Development build loader. That one's a cool one. What this will do if you want to get it, if you want to run the latest dev build, which isn't as stable, but I've never really had any problems with it. Um this one will run the latest development version. It'll automatically download it for you, which is actually pretty cool. So as you can see here, dev build loader PHP. The new what they use now is PHP, but what they used to use was PMF. Both of them will work as a plugin. If you, if it if it's not PHP or PMF, then it probably isn't what you want. All right. So now you have the plugins folder here. So just drag the development build loader into there. Hit start, and let's give it a run. Let's see. Looks like having an issue with it. That is something that happens sometimes, but don't worry. I'm just gonna put in what would be a logical, which for some reason it should. I mean, it should work at four gigs, like my both my servers do, pocket mine and bucket. But well, for some reason. Mine is having trouble. Maybe uh, it probably is because I'm interfering with the second server I have, which is isn't even running. But whatever, I have to look at it myself. But all you gotta do is hit start and put in your plugins. A plugin folder will be made. The worlds are, auto are automatically gonna be generated, and that's all you gotta do. I wish I could show you it running in action, but I really I don't know, it screwed up for some reason. Kind of annoying, but whatever, it happens. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, because it is kind of confusing, leave a comment down below, and I will try to reply more than often because, like I said, it is confusing. So I do want to help out as best as I can, so just leave a comment down below, and don't freak out, because if you freak out, then I ain't going to help you, because you look like some arrogant little prick kid that doesn't know what he's doing with the computer, and probably should get off Pornhub, and yeah, so on. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.